G'day guys, it's John from producelocally.com.au and today we're going out with Jill and Nick Dyson of Food Paths to forage for mushrooms in the pine forests in Southern Highlands in New South Wales. I've got my little basket with me, so let's go and have a look at what sort of mushrooms we're looking for and see what we can get. So you set a mound pushing up the straw, huh? Off near the right now, you see that's getting a bit old, so we might get fussy. I mean, you can you can start with How that, about these? but um, yeah, see, so this one okay. is younger than this one, yes, this and one, that one is no. a bit drier. Yeah, so, as soon as it goes all wrinkly, well, look, let's pick it now, but as we get more better ones, you might choose yeah. to discard these, right? yeah. Now this is where, if you trim it, if you don't want to get all the dirt in amongst the gills and everything. That's the thing. Now Nick's going to have to produce his knife that, he, that was on Facebook. <laughs> his mushroom knife. So I've heard about this knife. Yes, you, you saw a picture, you answered. I did. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Now one, one girl told me that she actually takes the gills off and just slices the rest what of it. Why would you do that? Well, but but that's right. I mean, I think it's fine, but you don't want them to get all dirt in them. That's, yeah. the, that's the thing. So what I'd be doing with these, Anne, well, you wash them, actually, don't you? Brushing you them. You just wipe them with paper towel, yeah. wet paper towel. But I would be getting rid of the pine needles here. You're going to fill your bucket in five minutes. Yeah. Okay, so this is your mushrooming tool, Nick. Yes, it is. It's it's for uh, harvesting truffles and or mushrooms. Yeah. And I got it in Italy uh, at one of the uh, slow food get-togethers where they had a whole lot of different knives, cheese knives, etc. Yep. And I thought this one uh, was different to all the others, so I'd, I'd give it a try. And uh, this company, Alexander, does a lot of different cheese knives and specialty yep. chef's knives, that sort of thing. Yeah, so obviously this ends for cutting the mushroom. Yep. <laughs> and Excuse um, me. the other end's just for brushing all the dirt. and Just to brush the, the dust. Oh, and the, are yep. you, are you And it's, it's good to... Um, to collect a few of the, the green pine needles and I'll put them with the mushrooms as well. Yeah. And what does that help with the mushrooms? Oh, well, uh, one of the recipes says you should put them in the, in the recipe as long as they're good, nice, okay. green, clean pine needles. And that adds flavour to the recipe? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've never tried it, but it's, it's worth a try. Excellent. But that's, that's the beast. Yep. Comes in handy. It's good for... The famous mushroom knife. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'd say so. From, yeah. from okay. If we turn like it up and it's sponge underneath, it is. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. See, see it's a sponge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yes, we'll pop this. Okay, there we go. The knife looks good. See, different colours too, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. But quite different with that sponge. So that's a slippery jack. Okay, Which that's, is that's edible. edible as that well, is edible as well. This is saffron mushroom. This is saffron mushroom. This is what I want to focus on because this is the one I'm 100% confident about. Yeah. I'm 90% confident about that. But you, you can take, a take, take that if you want. But yeah. Show me this one. Yeah, if we if we don't know whether they're edible or no, not, it's probably best no. just to leave them be, isn't it? Leave them. Yeah. They look different. They do look pretty spectacular, though, don't yeah. they? Yeah. There's some very pretty ones here, but we don't know what they are. Yeah, are they white? Look. Yes, there's about 200 or so of them over there. Are there? Yeah, uh, and they're just actually popping out of... Yeah, this... <laughs> so this one's definitely a, a non-eating one, Jill. Non-eating yeah. one, and yeah. definitely will make you sick. Probably what killed the Chinese people. That's right. No, they yeah. picked white ones. Did Obviously. they? Yeah. Little white ones with the white underneath. That's uh, like I think we picked yeah. it, I think. Yeah. It just follows a straight rose back. Yeah. You saw it. There you go. <laughs> You want a good one? No, it's alright, you can have it. I'll have this other one. <laughs> yes, they are. 
Yeah. Red or yeah. 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 Fire, fireman's oh, I've, got, I've got some at home. Do a bit of a Huey. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, I've got a lot of slippery jacks. Yeah. So we're going to have to try them. Yeah. yeah they're not so slimy because they're. All right, now we've been collecting two mushrooms today, and these are both edible mushrooms. Now, this one on the left here is what's commonly called a slippery jack. It's got a quite a, a slippery surface on top, leathery sort of surface, brown, and on the bottom, the distinguishable part is this yellowy uh, sponge that's on the bottom, rather than having gills like the other mushroom. And this mushroom on the right is a saffron mushroom and it's got the nice saffron colour on top okay and on the bottom again it has the saffron coloured gills okay when they get a little bit older I'll show you one that's a bit older then the gills on the bottom can get a bit olivey coloured you can probably see this one there's some sort of greeny sort of areas in there so that's just because it's a little bit older they'll tend to be a little bit woody but I'm told they're still all right. And the, uh, the younger ones, nice young one like that, will last a lot longer, where these ones will not last as long, so they should be used fairly quickly. Those ones can be kept in the fridge in a paper bag for a bit longer. Things to cook them with, they're good in like soups and casseroles and stuff. Also just cooked in um, olive oil or butter with a bit of um, parsley and just sauteed in a fry pan and served on toast like a bruschetta. Um, you can also dehydrate these, so dehydrate them in a dryer and then um, store them in like vacuum sealed bags and that'll, that'll keep them for a couple of months. Otherwise if you're going to keep them in a fridge in a plastic, in a, not a plastic bag, definitely keep them in a paper bag, then you'll, you'll want to use them within a week or so. Just one little word of warning, if you do go looking for mushrooms, is to be absolutely sure of what you're collecting that they're not going to be something that's harmful to you and if you're not absolutely sure then go with someone who does know what they're collecting because especially with mushrooms there are some mushrooms that are very poisonous and can kill you um, there's some with psychotropic um, properties which can do a lot of damage as well so it's it's best to definitely know what you can eat and I guess more importantly know what you can't eat um, so yeah, make sure you're sure of it or go with someone who does know which mushrooms are good and which mushrooms are not. Alright, we've had a good time foraging out here with Nick and Jill from Food Paths. They've showed us well, two, definitely two types of mushrooms that we can collect, being the, the saffron mushroom and the, or the pine mushroom they commonly call them, and the slippery jack mushroom. So they're, they're two that I'm, I'm pretty confident now I can collect those and take them home and they'll be safe to eat. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with us on our little mushroom foraging expedition. And if you want to know about the mushroom foraging or any other activities at the food path that Jill and Nick from Food Paths do, then I'll have a link below to their website. And you can go there and find out what other great food tours they're doing. Anyway, until next time, see you later.